Hey everybody, want to do a video tonight on these crop circles that appeared in 2001 near the Chipotle Radio Telescope in Hampshire, United Kingdom. I know a lot of you have heard of this before. They are known as the Aeroceba Response Crop Circles. But I know many of you haven't, and I just wanted to share it with you. This is CropCircleResearch.com, and this is an article written by Paul Vigue. And it says this. On Tuesday, the 21st of August, 2001, two new crop formations were reported near Chibolton Radio Telescope in Hampshire, in the United Kingdom. Both were very impressive looking and consisted of a large number of small pixels, which when viewed from the air formed a recognizable shape, unlike many other crop formations. One represented a human face, and the other resembled a radio transmission that SETI, the Search for Extraterrestrial Intelligence, sent from the Arecibo Radio Telescope in 1974. This latter, formation, this latter formation will be examined in this article, in which I hope not only to describe and explain the original transmission, but also to examine and decode a number of significant changes in occurring in the crop formation. Now, before I go any further, I'd just like to show you what this is all about here. This is the Chibolton Radio Telescope, and these are the two crop circles, or actually they're crop squares, that appeared right outside of this radio transmitting place. And this is a picture of the face from viewed above. The pixel formation and this is another picture of where they appeared um, right outside this radio telescope in a field and they appeared overnight during a rainstorm and here is another look and once again the face and I'll keep on reading it says the Arecibo message. First, I will give some background to the original message sent from Arecibo back in 1974. Arecibo is on the northern coast of Puerto Rico and contains a natural dish-shaped hole in the rock. Inside this bowl was constructed the world's largest radio telescope, with a diameter of 1,000 feet. In 1974, a number of modifications have been carried out to the transmitter, enabling it to broadcast signals of up to 20 terawatts and 1 terawatt equals 1 trillion watts and as an inaugural test of these improvements it was decided by SETI to transmit an encoded message to the heavens. This signal was aimed towards the globular star cluster M13 some 25,000 light years away consisting of some 300,000 stars in the constellation of Hercules. The message was actually transmitted on November 16, 1974, and consisted of 1,679 pulses of binary code, which is zeros and ones, which took a little under three minutes to transmit. Now I'm going to go over the original message that we sent up in 1974, which is shown on the right here. It says the original message was comprised of several sections, each depicting a particular aspect of our civilization. At the top are binary representations of numbers 1 through 10, interestingly showing that the numbers 8, 9, and 10 is two columns. This shows anyone decoding the message that we can specify that numbers too large to be written on a single line can be carried over. The next section contains the binary values 1, 6, 7, 8, and 15, which indicate the atomic numbers of the primary elements for life on Earth, hydrogen, carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, and phosphorus, respectively. The larger section of the three rows represents the formulas for the sugars and bases in the nucleotides of DNA. Because this is a graphical representation of our DNA double helix either side of a straight vertical bar, which indicates the number of nucleotides in DNA. And directly below the DNA double helix is a small representation of us, humans, with a body and two arms and two legs like a little stick man. 
On the left is a binary value of the population of Earth. This can be calculated to roughly 4.29 billion, which was the population of the world back in 1974. On the right of the humanoid form is a binary code for the height of humans. And when you uh, translate that, it comes out to roughly 176.4 centimeters, or 5 feet 9 inches, the average height of humans on Earth. The next section is a simplified representation of our solar system, where we live. It shows the Sun and nine planets roughly representative of size. By moving the third planet slightly up, it highlights that something is significant about the third planet from the Sun, Earth. The last section depicts the origin of the message itself, the Arecibo Radio Telescope, and the size of it. And now he goes over in the difference in the, the crop formation that was sent back to us. It says, after extensive analysis, I have discovered nine major discrepancies between what we see in the crop field at Chibolton and the original message that we transmitted to the stars in 1974. And it's, he says, I shall leave any interpretation until later, but for now, just highlight the differences. The exact detail of the changes couldn't be confirmed until I actually visited the formation on the ground in order to accurately check the binary code. Reading flattened crop as zero and standing crop squares as ones. And he goes over the differences here between the crop formation on the left and the original message that we sent up on the right. And I uh, recommend viewing this website so you can see this a little more carefully than you can on your screen. But he says this, the numbers 1 to 10 appear exactly in the same formation. However, the atomic numbers indicating the prevalent elements making up life on Earth has an additional value inserted into the binary sequence. This is precisely added in the correct location and in the original binary code, therefore it cannot be a mistake. Decoding from the crop formation, this additional element has an atomic number of 14, silicon. And he says this, moving down the next change is an obvious one, consisting of an extra strand on the left side of the DNA double helix. Another less obvious change is in the binary coding of the number of nucleotides in the DNA itself. If you look in the original diagram above, I've highlighted the changes more accurately on the right by using red squares to outline red squares and outlines to indicate digits that have been changed in the crop formation. There are quite significant changes in the shape of the humanoid, which become becomes almost alien-like, and to the diagram of the Arecibo dish. For clarity, I've not bothered going over these in red because the differences are easily apparent. Either side of what is now an ET, there are changes to both the population figure and also the height value. The latter is now 1000 in binary, or 8. If we multiply this by the original wavelength unit, we get a height of 100 0.8 centimeters, which is roughly 3 feet 4 inches. Interesting, because this would correlate with ET witness accounts. Below this, we notice additional changes to the solar system chart. The third planet from the Sun is not the only one highlighted now. The fourth and fifth are as well. The fifth even appears to be emphasized even more, with three additional pixels. Lastly, what was representative of the Arecibo transmitter in the original message is even more cryptic because we had a crop formation appearing on the exact same date a year before this one appeared. And he sums up this article this way. He says, I should point out at this point that the actual quality of the formation on the ground was remarkably good. However, it did appear to have been flattened in terms of a grid, i.e. going across the formation and down the formation. The nearby face formation was more elaborate in terms of the ground lay, as each individual circle appeared to have been swirled separately to the rest of the formation. 
indicated by a smooth swirl of crop around each circle, instead of being brushed across the formation, forming pathways between each circle. However, both formations would represent an immense effort required in order to portray what we see in the field and from the air. To create either within the constraints of a few hours in darkness is extremely impressive irrespective of their origin, terrestrial or extraterrestrial. Again, irrespective of origin, both have taught me personally a great deal about SETI, human physiology, binary encoding, and more importantly, communication, both in transcribing this for you, the reader, as well as academic conversations I, I've had with people as a result of doing this analysis. While reading this, I hope that you feel the sense of wonder and learning that I have felt while writing it. So once again, here are those crop circles that were put in this field right outside this radio telescope. Here is this face that you can see from the air quite clearly. And I just thought that uh, these crop formations are the most important ones that we have received. Um, you really can't argue with uh, the message that we got back. It is, you know, in binary code. And, you know, people always are waiting for contact from above, extraterrestrials, etc. Well, in my book, it came on August 20th, 2001, was the day that we had confirmed contact. Hope you thought this was interesting. Have a nice day.